Welcome to another Six Life Questions, hosted by your boy, Corey G. Today, I have Nicholas Sands, a.k.a. Silent Nick, which I learned at his wedding. What's good, Nick? What's up, man? So, Nick, I think this is going to be good because, obviously, even when I went to your wedding, everyone referred to you as Silent Nick, your buddies, because you don't talk a lot. But when you do, you're saying some real shit, including at work, because when you do speak up, it's always, you know... Uh, so I would argue that maybe you're the one that got it right. And I talk too much. So maybe that's what, you know, we need to learn more from Nick, (laughs) but, um, Nick's been working with us at max effort for a while now and super just guy you can count on. He's got a great military background and I met him at Columbus state. And so I'm intrigued to hear your answers to the six life questions. Yeah, I'm intrigued too. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So number one, Nick, what is one ritual that you were ultimately dedicated to and it could be business personal like just something that you're extremely dedicated to that you do every day or you know comp- real often man um one ritual for business probably i mean i know this might sound cliche but always let people talk first and no, listen to them i don't think that's cliche I mean, at all just always coming in with the mindset open ears pretty much i think it's similar to when you're negotiating trying to get the other person to say the number first (laughs) it's kind of in the same vein because you're trying to see like what their i guess not offense is but like what their i guess you know what they're going to throw out and then you kind of work off of it potentially Yeah. yeah i mean coming from such a ritual morning from the military aspect yeah it was just always wake up work out just get after the day pretty much what was something that you didn't do before you went to the military that you do do now or you liked doing that was forced upon you because everything there is very Mm -hmm. like you know strategic and set up um probably always have a plan for the day like and that. honestly, probably working out because it wasn't it wasn't that big of a lifestyle for me. I mean, I didn't start working out till senior year of high school, to be honest. Like, okay, that was not. It was just always play sports, never work out. So I got it. like having that, having that, and doing that probably set forth motion a lot of things. Planning the day and working out. Mm-hmm. You're going to be ahead of 90% of the population if you're doing yeah. those two things, yeah. Nick. That was that was a big thing for sure. I like so. it. That's great. Not cliche at all, by the way. Um, what is one thing, and this ended up being multiple things because a lot of people had the same one, but like one thing that you are super proud of? Man, um, this will probably change, obviously, as life goes on, but probably right now what I'm most proud of is just going back to the military thing. I mean, it was something that I n- n- never really thought I would do, but I definitely did it. So elaborate on it, like finishing boot camp or the four or six years you like, g- give me some context to it. Yeah. Um, finishing. Well, it was never that like I wouldn't finish it because once I'm in it into something, you're in it. I, I'm never, I just don't, it's just like I'm finishing it. And if I didn't like it, I didn't like it. But yeah, <clears throat> I don't think, I'd say more deployment was probably a bigger thing because coming back out of boot camp and everything, it was like, okay, I have family and, you know, Saray, my girlfriend at the time, it was like, I had to leave them to go do something or, you know, mm-hmm. for deployment. So I would say deployment was probably the biggest goal for sure because it's not something you volunteer for. Obviously, you sign up to do it. So that was definitely a big goal of mine. And Well, and they just tell you you're going yeah. when, you're, when you're signed up, right? For sure, yeah. And – a lot of people like my mom of course of course your mom's gonna worry about that type of stuff even yes. just signing signing up for the military which is understandable but like yeah even me 
knowing that I'm signing up for this, I knew it was probably going to be a thing. So I already had the mindset of like, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. So it's cool. So really, when you just talk about being in the military in general, that time of your life overall, you're just super proud of that in general. Yeah, that, I mean, that was and a great first chapter. Yeah. And, but the next chapter, like with all you guys, I yeah. want to make it oh, even yeah. a better chapter. I want to keep adding those chapters. Yeah. It sounds like, well, that's exactly what you're doing. All right, number three. What's one thing you wish you could change? Oh, man. <laughs> this is a hard uh, question. I guess it was, yeah, this definitely is a hard one. Because I try to not look at, oh, what could I change? Like, what could I have done better? Because, you know, it's the dice that were rolled. I'm going to relieve some pressure on it to tell you, like, when yeah. I when I think about this question, I know what I wish I could change, but I'm glad it didn't change because I wouldn't be the same guy. Yep. So it's kind of an interesting question. Yeah, that's for sure what I'm thinking right now. I mean, maybe back in high school, trying a little bit harder in school. But again, it goes back to the fact that, like, yeah. I was, you know, I wasn't the greatest at school, so whatever. So it sent me down the path that I'm already proud of. So, yeah, like, you know. Not a guy that lives in regret. No, I try because you don't want to dwell on that. That will just eat you alive. It'll dominate your brain. <laughs> yeah. So. But, All right. Next yeah. question. Yeah. Number four. How did you build confidence or what is one of the things that helped you build confidence? Hmm. Uh, it's probably just going back to working out in the military. I know there's a, you know, chain of command in the military, but in the moment, if you don't know what you're doing and you're not confident in what you're doing, not to put it to an extreme, but someone could die. But you could die. Yeah. So <laughs> Straight up. That's, you know, like everyone says, any coach or anything like that, practice as you play. Yeah. So. That and that's the ultimate be, one. Yeah, it is. And that's a lot of pressure on a lot of people. But, I mean, I think it's taken pretty serious in that community. So. Well, and their whole setup is to basically tear guys down essentially and beat boot camp to a certain mm -hmm. point and build you back up more confident. Correct. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah, the yeah. whole game yeah. of it. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Tear you back down, take anything that was instilled in, instilled in you as a kid that was probably not the greatest. Take that down and mm -hmm. then build you back up. Awesome. That's why, you know, sometimes Nick, when I see, I think is it, I think it was Arnold mm -hmm. that explained this, that, Everyone had to serve in this country back then. Yeah. And there's some countries that are like that. And I know it, the military is not for everybody. Yeah. But it's like it does that mm -hmm. to almost everyone that goes through it to some degree. Yeah. So you wonder if that forced discipline isn't necessary. I'm not here to change some policies, but, yeah. you know, I've thought about that because yeah. I obviously I like discipline things. You know what yeah. I mean? So yep. I've, I've often thought of that. Um, what does success mean to you? So it's uh, it's probably what you enjoy doing. You know, I'm not a big material type of guy, but I mean, having nice things is not a bad thing for sure. Providing for the ones that you love is a huge thing. That I th that is probably the biggest thing. Being successful to me is mm. providing for those people. So. I'll, I'll piggyback on that too. I think mm -hmm. what I learned is providing experiences for people you love that's is a really one. cool thing Yeah, because a obviously you need the nuts and bolts, mm -hmm. but it's like the first time my grandparents got to experience something that they had never done because I was able to provide that for them. It was probably one of the coolest things. Yeah, so that's... I realized that it's not really a dollar or whatever, but sometimes it's something that doesn't even cost anything. Experience. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. So it's pretty good. Yeah. Um, all right. When let me ask you about the material items thing. When mm -hmm. did that, or have you always been that way, Nick? Because some people, and I was driven by material items really early, growing up with not very much. But then once I got certain things, I realized that wasn't it. Yeah. 
Yeah. But it's like, has it, have you always been this way? Or did you, as you got older, because to me, like we just talked about before I came in here about more minimalistic, like you wear a lot of the same, you're like a pretty low key dude. Yeah. 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 Um, no, probably when I was younger, I was probably a lot more jealous of people mm -hmm. that had things and I wanted that, <clears throat> but you know, come now, I, obviously I've seen that because being in the military, I could have nothing and it could be the greatest thing ever. Like just seeing how people live from different cultures and being all over the world, it puts in a bigger picture. Like, is that really something that I need? And I, I see that now and it, don't get me wrong. Some stuff it's fun. It's fun for sure. And the experience, like you said, the experience is big, but no, I definitely grew into it and listened and watched that material things. Not a big thing to me. Don't really care. The travel, I think, is a big part of it. Because yeah. when people don't, you know, like where I grew up, where Cole grew up, it's like there's some people that never leave like that 10 mile radius, mm -hmm. right? And then I think your perspective on the world gets kind of skewed. When you go see worldly things, yeah. I think it changes. Uh, so maybe you could speak on that for a sec. Cause I, I think that that's why I try to get my kids outside of the U S multiple yeah. times. Cause I can, because I think it gives them just perspective. Yeah, it will. It will give you great perspective on everything. Um, yeah. I mean, just traveling in like Europe, a lot of, I mean, just seeing everyone and, you know, it's just this very simple life, the places that I've been, and you can tell, you can visibly see that they're very happy, happy even, yes. even though that they don't have much, and I think that's that there's actual joy. For. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of joy in that, and I love you it. can appreciate that for sure. Hell yeah. All right, so last one. Hmm. Very good job, by the way, Nick. <laughs> I've enjoyed this. Uh, number six. What is one piece of advice? Now, this will also change as you get older, potentially, too, that you yeah. would leave like everyone. So it's like out of travels, military, parents, uncles, aunts, like what is just one thing or, or maybe even two things that you could mm -hmm. say, like, these are things that if you know Nick, you need to know from me. Man, that's a good one. Uh, the first one that comes to mind, and I'm going to go back to the my whole persona now is being quiet. Yeah. <laughs> so always listen. Always listen to what people have to say. Always take in different perspectives, even if it is good or bad. Yeah. You can decipher that and figure out how you want to want to be for sure. Yeah. Were you always this way? Like on the quieter uh, side? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And I try and think back of like, you know, why that was or why that is. And I don't, I don't really know why. It's just the way you are, dude. Yeah, you just might be born, born that way. And, and I'm, yeah. hundred percent. I like it that way for sure. I, I would say that in my kind of travels and business, it's the guys that are operating like you a lot of the times is the ones that usually when you have like a really, really difficult thing, they're good for counsel because they've literally been listening the entire time. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's like, I don't think it's, you know, good or bad. I just think that there's different ways to operate. Mm -hmm. And, um, I appreciate it though. Yeah. And that probably goes back to the military thing of like, for sure. Shut up and listen. Yeah. But like that probably added more to it, but yeah, I've always been like this. So okay. any other thing you can think of? No, that's probably the, big one that comes to mind right now. And like you said, that'll for sure change and I'll, or yeah. I'll just probably add to that. Yeah. I, th I think that as a concept though, there's a lot of loud mouths that ain't saying nothing <laughs> that probably should yeah. be listening more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they'll, well, hopefully they'll learn, but <laughs> we'll see. Well, Nick, where I know you're not big on social media, but where can everybody find you if they, they need it? They have any questions about what they heard today? Uh, I believe it's Nicholas underscore sand. 
I believe it yeah. is, which is funny because yeah. I knew you were like, wait a second, what is it? Yeah. I was, uh, yeah I <laughs> hey, but know. also <laughs> customer service at maxovermuscle.com, oh, yeah. yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. That's Here probably an easy up. way to get yeah. to Nick. Nick, I enjoyed this. Thanks for coming Thank on. You, sir. Yeah, for sure. Six Life Questions, hosted by your boy Corey G, brought to you by MaxEverMuscle